How's it going everyone? In this video, I want to talk to you about a relatively new feature called Amazon CloudWatch Composite Alarms. Now, composite alarms are really useful in the sense that they allow you to more easily monitor the health of your applications. So I wanted to do a quick video to overview the feature and to show you why it's useful and how it can be incorporated into your alarm workflow. By the way, this is going to be a two part video series. First, we're going to do an overview and then in the part two, we're going to walk you through the console on how to create one step by step. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, let's just talk about this in terms of an example and talk about what problems do composite alarms solve. So I want you to imagine that we are building an application that's based on AWS Lambda and we want to monitor the health of our Lambda function to ensure that we get notified whenever something is wrong with it. So in a very traditional way, what people would typically do is they create a couple of key alarms that they want to monitor. The first one is based off of errors. Whenever errors are elevated as a percentage of the total invocations, we may want to trigger an alarm that notifies us. The second common one is in terms of latency. So anytime latencies are elevated, we also want to send a notification because that may indicate that there's a problem either with our application or maybe a dependency that our application relies on. And the third one that's particularly important for Lambda functions is throttles. If we have a throttle alarm that's firing, that usually indicates that there's something wrong with the concurrency of our Lambda function, or we may have too many messages or too many invocations that are trying to be invoked at once. So in the old way, without composite alarms, what we would typically do is that we'd create a notification on each one. So for error alarms, we would send an email. And then for latency alarms, we'd send a separate email. And then for throttle alarms, we'd also send a separate email as well. Now, this is all fine, but there's a lot of noise here, right? Like if something happens with throttles, Typically, when you have a throttling issue, your latencies will start to elevate because your clients are starting to get throttled. Your errors will also start to, to elevate because they're getting errors as well as a result of those throttles. So one issue can trigger two other issues and you can just get bombarded with emails and it makes it really difficult to make sense of what is actually happening and what is wrong with your application. There's just way too much stuff to have to get through in order to figure out what the problem is. So let's talk a little bit about what composite alarms do. And as you may imagine, it is kind of like a wrapper for all of these three separate alarms. So instead of creating the three separate alarms that trigger those notifications on their own, we create what's called, in this case, I named this a system health composite alarm. So this is kind of like a top level alarm, and it's still an alarm in the view of Amazon CloudWatch, except that it is the parent node and there are multiple different child alarms or child nodes that are underneath it. So we would create this composite alarm such that underneath it, it's child alarms are our error alarms, our latency alarm, and our throttling alarm. And in this approach, we can customize when this alarm fires using Boolean logic. So we can say when either error alarm or latency alarm or throttle alarm fires, then we want to send an email notification. There's also some other operators that you can use, but we're going to get to that in the next slide or so. So that's the idea of these alarms. Instead of having to have multiple different notifications that are all firing independently, we can create a link between all of them with a top level composite alarm that will basically do all the heavy lifting and link all of those things together. So you only receive one notification. Now, in addition to just reducing the noise, I want to call out another very important benefit of using these types of alarms. It's something I've used a lot in my production applications in terms of dashboarding. So with dashboards, you typically, when you go to a dashboard, you want to see like all the metrics that are relevant to your system or your application that you're monitoring. Now, the cool thing about having composite alarms embedded onto your dashboard is that they are a single source of truth as to whether or not your application is in a healthy or an unhealthy state. Instead of you having to look through all your metrics and see, oh, is anything elevated? Is anything low? What's actually going wrong here? Is my system healthy or not? You can instead just embed that composite alarm onto your dashboard itself. And then it'll just be green when it's an okay state. It'll be red when it's an alarm state. So all you really need to do is just look at one badge and that'll tell you whether or not your system is good to go or having some problems. Now, if you own multiple different applications, say you own like five different services and you're responsible 
available for all of them. You can just have a single dashboard that allows you to view all the different badges for all of the different composite alarms that are mapped to each application. And in a single page, you can very easily identify whether or not all of your systems are behaving as expected. So that's another really cool side effect of using composite alarms, a single source of truth for monitoring your application's health. All right, so that's a little bit about why composite alarms are useful and the problem that they solve. Let's talk a little bit about the details or things that you need to know about when you're creating your composite alarms. So there's one main concept with composite alarms and it's just rule expressions. Now rule expressions define the rule conditions to determine your alarm state. So let's take a look at what the syntax looks like to give you a better idea of what you're gonna have to do in the console to set these things up. So in this one, what we are saying is that we want to alarm when our CPU utilization is high and not when we have a deployment in progress. So I'll let you soak that in for a second, but um, if I can explain it to you really quick, whenever we do deployments, it's expected for CPU utilization to spike, right? Like you gotta parse all the dependencies, you gotta launch your server, you gotta do all the things to bring that server up and get everything running. So we don't necessarily want to trigger our CPU utilization alarm when a deployment is in progress. That would just be completely useless because that's something that's expected to happen anyways during a deployment. So that's essentially what this alarm does. It's an alarm that won't fire during deployments when CPU utilization is expected to be high. So that's a pretty simple example. Do note here that I'm using the AND operator here, and then we're using the NOT. So you can use both the positive and the negative. So you can do like all the things you would expect with just Boolean logic here to create some pretty sophisticated alarms. So speaking of sophisticated alarms, here's another one. It's not that sophisticated, but it gives you a better example of some of the things that you can do. Uh, so for this one, one thing that I want to add before we go through this is that you can embed parentheses in this uh, to create more interesting combinations of alarms. So in the first block of parentheses, we're saying that we want to alarm when errors are high or when latencies are high. So when either of those two things are true, we want to alarm, but only when it's combined with a deployment in progress. So this makes sense, right? When a deployment is in progress and we see either our errors or our latency starting to spike, it indicates that something is going wrong with our deployment and we probably want to roll back. In fact, this alarm is very similar to one that I use in my production applications for auto rollbacks. So in other words, this is a rollback alarm that will fire when errors or latency are elevated, which is a great early warning to get your system back into a healthy state after a bad deployment. So a couple other things about rule expressions to know is that uh, there's multiple different functions that are supported. It's not just alarms. Uh, so you can also use the OK state and the insufficient data state. Those are two that are also available to you. So next I wanna talk about some good to knows or just some limitations and some pricing things to know about this feature. So the first one is that all underlying alarms must be in the same AWS region and the same account. I'm pretty certain that this isn't gonna be a big deal for most of you, but it may be a little bit of a problem because some of you may own multiple different applications and you have multiple different accounts for those applications. So creating a composite alarm that'll stretch across all of them, unfortunately, isn't possible at this time. I really hope that AWS is listening and allows you to link into other regions and other accounts. That'll make this an even more powerful feature, but at this time, it's not supported. The second one, which I expect to not be an issue for most of you as well, is that rule expressions can reference up to a maximum of 100 child alarms. So 100 is the hard limit. You can't go over that. Just something for you to know about. I don't expect this to be an issue, though, for most of you. And lastly, in terms of pricing, composite alarms do cost additional and they cost 50 cents per month per alarm. Now do keep in mind that this is in addition to the child alarms that you have as well. Now normal alarms, what I'm calling child alarms here, in Amazon CloudWatch cost 10 cents per month. So if you have a composite alarm with three child alarms underneath it, that'll cost you 50 cents plus 10 cents plus 10 cents plus 10 cents, which is 80 cents per month for that composite and all the three underlying alarms. So next we're gonna do a walkthrough in the AWS console. I'll put that video on the right when it's available and thanks so much for watching.